Hello friend, welcome to lecture on academic integrity and plagiarism in research. Myself Dr. Ramesh Sigort, I am director library uh, and information at Indira Gandhi National Center for the Art, it is an autonomous body of Ministry of Culture. The topic which I am going to talk is uh, very relevant in both academic and research field and has a lot of issues in recent past. In this lecture, I am going to talk what is plagiarism, how to detect and how to avoid it. Because I believe that prevention is the best cause and avoidance is the best way to have quality research. So, let me begin with a quote uh, by uh, Mr. Narayan Murthy, a well known uh, industrialist. He mentioned that in 80s India was among top 10 countries in the world in terms of producing original research. We slipped to number 12 position in 1990s and now we are not even top 20. Let me see the another uh, scenario contrary to the statement made by Narayan Murthy. In 2010, India was at 11th position in terms of number of research publication published in a year. And in 2015, we moved to the position 5, means we are the number 5 in the world in terms of producing number of research publication. So, do not you think this is contrary to the statement made by Mr. Narayan Murthy, but there is a very significant factor in this. Originality of research is considered how your research book is being used, referred by people, cited by the people in research. So, in that definitely we are lacking on quality of research. Let me see the another dimensions to this particular topic, the role of libraries in uh, plagiarism. You all know that libraries are required for any kind of academic and research activities. Without libraries, no research is possible. Starting from problem formulation to the dissemination of result, at every place there is a need of the library. Now, with this e revolution, where 90 percent of the electronic resources are accessible over internet, it has become challenging for both libraries as well as users to cope up with this e revolution. I have another slide to prove that how libraries are important in research. When we talk about use of library resources, there is a data of top 25 universities taken from the Scopus and in this top 10 universities who are number top 10 in terms of producing research output, but also using the journal resources in the largest number. Means, there is a correlation between number of articles downloaded and number of papers written. It clearly establishes a kind of relationship between libraries and research that without reading, writing, without using library resources, you cannot produce research papers. Let us begin the topic plagiarism. To begin with, first thing which I want to talk is why do we research? To contribute or to extend knowledge. How do we do this? By working on the work of others. It means without referring existing knowledge, you cannot do any research. And after doing research, what we are expected? We are expected to place our research in the right context to show that we are aware of what else is happening in the world, to show that we understand where our work fits. When we report this research in form of a article in form of a thesis or in, in form of any publication, we need to make a clear distinction between what is our own original work and what is our opinion about the work of others. Means, what ideas we have borrowed from others and what are our original idea. And this work can be ideas, photograph, picture, any kind of opinions, figures, table, etcetera. Means, Whatever resources you are referring in your work, you have to clearly make a distinction between your ideas and the ideas borrowed from others. 
and if you are unable to make it then there is a problem then you are violating certain kind of academic integrity rules you are violating certain ethical issues so entire academic integrity and ethical domain there are certain kind of guidelines there are certain kind of rules there are certain kind of conventions related to honesty related to objectivity of the research related to integrity of the research how you have to carefully do the research intellectual property right confidentiality privacy issues and also there are different kind of social responsibilities and uh, and then also legality how to take care of use of animals or human uh, subjects in uh, doing the research so in academic integrity and ethical issues cover a lot of topics but in this lecture i am to focus only on one that is plagiarism sometime people got some kind of confusion between copyrights and plagiarism believe me there is no direct relationship in terms of violation of rules and other thing both are having different meanings and different use copyright is about protecting rights of authors but plagiarism is to give respect to the rights of authors plagiarism is a violation of academic norms it is an off offense against the author and more importantly copyright is applicable only to the licensed contents but plagiarism other hand is applicable to even unpublished contents means both license and unlicensed contents plagiarism in research may be referred as a kind of misconduct means fabrication falsification or any other practice that seriously deviates from practices commonly accepted in the discipline or in the academic and research communities generally in proposing performing reviewing or reporting research and creative activities what is plagiarism this is a word derived from a latin word plagiai which means kidnap so it is an act of stealing someone's idea and presenting it as your own idea means you are borrowing idea from somebody else and claiming that it is your idea there are different kind of plagiarism let's talk about intentional plagiarism first uh, which covers falsification fabrication in this act it's a making of data or result or manipulating the data means the person who is manipulating or faking the data is very well know that what i am doing is wrong even then the person is doing it it means it is an intentional act and no law or no guidelines can help it only person has to be punished for this kind of act when we talk about unintentional plagiarism my experience uh, based in jnu during 6 uh, years interaction with the students and researchers i found many time they are not aware uh, they are doing it because they are not properly aware of how to cite they are uh, not aware that you can't quote accessibly they are unable to understand difference between voices sentences how to integrate ideas of others uh, and many times they they are very uh, careless in writing they believe that they have given the reference and then they can borrow whatever they want so it is because of ignorance or unawareness self plagiarism is something which is also a plagiarism uh, people believe that whatever i have written i have right to make use of it whenever i want and whatever i want but it is not true your publication and use of your publication is just like any other reference uh, you cannot uh, use it again and again you have to follow the citations besides there are number of reasons for plagiarism one more important reason which i find which need to be tackled is how to improve this cut and paste culture in our school days students are given holiday homework or assignments and uh, teachers are not guiding them that what material wikipedia or internet sources you are using you need to cite it so some kind of education is required at school level and undergraduate level english is also a issue when we write in english we all are having different mother tongues and we are not a native writer in english so sometimes we are not very confident and we, we borrow idea and text from other sources to and lack of referencing skill is also a reason where library can play a very important role penalties are there for this kind of act it is not just an ethical issues now with the ugc regulation 
penalties have been defined in uh, level 1, level 2, level 3. For this, you can refer University Plagiarism Regulation 2018. This problem is not in, in countries like India or China, it is everywhere, even in Western world, in Europe. And people, not just students, a minister is found, a researcher has been found, it, doctors have been found plagiarizing the content. So, it is not a problem of students and researcher, it is the problem of many. Publishers are aware of that, Committee on Publication Ethics, which was established in 1997 is trying to take care of all these issues and they are also working a lot in how to deal with this particular issues. But many times this is not enough, you may be 100 percent correct in writing your paper or thesis, but it is always better to check using a plagiarism detection tool. There are number of tools available, Turnitin, and Authenticate and also Urkund, many uh, soft, uh, softwares are available. In this regard, I want to highlight one very important issue. People believe that any software is good enough for this kind of work, but the quality of the software in plagiarism detection is not based on the quality of the software. It is based on how much contents it is checking. And that is why Turnitin has monopoly because it is checking through cross ref millions of references. Uh, so, a good software is very important. You may be, if you are using open source or not very uh, good software, then you may not be able to detect the plagiarisms. It help in uh, detecting plagiarism, also help in improving the quality, checking the assignments. Every software has certain limitations, so is the case of plagiarism detection tool. Uh, it cannot check online, uh, non-online resources means print resources. It can't check uh, tables, graphs, images, uh, there is some problem with mathematical formulas. And uh, sometimes like uh, you have to see that languages are not covered in that, uh, most of the Indian languages are not covered in this. So, it has certain limitations. There is a very, uh, no software will tell you what is plagiarism. It will give you a similarity report, we call it originality report also. Now, it is how you analyze that report, that is the most important aspect in the plagiarism detection system. By verifying the original contents, by rewriting the contents or by changing the contents or giving the citations, there are a number of ways you need to analyze and you need to understand this originality report. There are certain kind of exclusions before you generate a originality report uh, like bibliography and references, table of contents, preface, acknowledgements are not covered in that. There are similarities of minor natures are not covered in that. As per UGC regulation 2018, all these uh, besides these references, other similarities of up to 10 percent is also not covered in that. How to avoid it? Best thing is you should be honest in writing. You should be very clear that you will not use any other's material without a citation. You should know your subject well and you must attend a student or a maybe researcher uh, must attend uh, courses, training in reference management tools and also it is important to organize author workshop. Here library's role is very important, where library play a very crucial role in enhancing the quality of research. So, by organizing these kind of workshop including author workshop library can help the faculty and student or other researcher in enhancing their quality of the research. Besides, users should be advised to use reference management tools, research forums, online discussion groups like Academia, ResearchGate, where they can have uh, sharing of resources and ideas, all these uh, ResearchGate and, and another important thing is ORCID. This is a unique ID for researcher. Uh, very popular and uh, it is just like a unique ID for Indian citizen called Aadhaar. So, a researcher can get this ID free of cost and beneficial for many purpose for citation and uh, it, they do not require to repeat their profile again and again because this kind of platform is linked with uh, many uh, publishers and international research communities. What is referencing? Uh, when we talk about how to avoid it, referencing play a very important role. A user or a researcher must know answers to these questions, what is citation, how do I cite source, when do I need to cite, what is bibliography, difference between annotated bibliography and bibliography, difference between 
endnote and footnotes all these things should be clear to a researcher that is why a course is very important. Uh, a user or a researcher should create a diary, research diary and keep a note of all those and I am talking about research diary using tools like Mandalay where you can keep note of all your readings and writings and when you start a particularly it is important for a PhD student whose time period is about 4 to 5 years and it is very difficult to remember all the references read during this particular 5 years. So, this kind of research diary uh, in form of a Mandalay account can help a lot. When we talk about referencing, we are talking each and every kind of source of information. It may be a for thesis, it may be for dissertation, paper, book, chapter, etcetera and why it is important? It is it, this citation help readers in understanding what is your own idea, what are ideas you have borrowed from other sources. It help examiner in identifying or uh, knowing that what is your own creation. It help reviewer in a paper that what are your original ideas and what you have borrowed from. Anything a word, opinion, statics, facts everything need to be cited. There are different kind of citation style depending upon your subject discipline you can choose. There are only three ways to use other material, other sources in your contents. It is summarizing, paraphrasing and quoting. Summarizing means integrating sources and how to integrate source? First you have to decide which relevant part of source is important to your research and why it is relevant and how much you need to summarize it depending, it may be a sentence, it may be a para depending upon the need of your text. It is not to increase the number of words or the chapters or the pages, it is to justify your arguments or correlate your argument with the existing work already done by somebody. Paraphrasing, a good paraphrasing by changing the order and structure of the sentences, use synonyms and different form of the words, may change the voice or perspective. Using quotation, quotation is the most commonly used form of citation in the research work. If you are quoting something, you, you have to understand what is quoting, how, when to quote, how much to quote, how do I incorporate quotation in my paper, quoting within quotes, how do I include long quotes in my paper, single verses, double quotations, punctuating quotations, when to quote, it is important, it vary from discipline to discipline also. So, you have to be very specific in your according to the convention in your subject discipline and there are certain rules anything beyond four consecutive words you need to cite it. But the quotation is up to 39 words then you have to use quotes, you have to close in quotes but if it is more than 40 words then it stands alone without quotation marks and is indented 5 spaces from the left margin. So, this is the way you can use quotation there is no limitation fixed. Uh, how much quotation, but it has to be a limit according to your requirement. When you do a research in a group work, it is important to acknowledge each and every researcher, a idea developed over a cup of tea even need to be acknowledged. You may be writing a single author publication or a multi author publication, you need to acknowledge each and every uh, source. When we use uh, other existing work there is only one exception what that exception is that a researcher a PhD student can use his or her papers in thesis or dissertation provided the paper he or she is the first author and paper is written during the period of research and on the topic of the research. Then in avoidance use of reference tool is also very important. It is important for researcher to know what are the different kind of reference management tools. Populars are EndNote, Mandalay, Jotero, they are very commonly used. EndNote is free available with Web of Science, we call it Web of Knowledge. It is a very good software, but the most commonly and most popular software today, Mandalay, which is supported by LSBS Science, it is a one of the very good software. It is not just a soft reference citation tool, it is also a kind of uh, research forum. Uh, for the researcher, it is having desktop and uh, other versions. Jotero is another very important software popularly used uh, by the 
various kind of colors. Then another idea uh, or another suggestion I want to make it, uh, if you want to avoid plagiarism, let us put the research under open access. There are very good initiative uh, both international and national. This is one of the NDLDD Network Digital Library of Thesis and Dissertation which provide access to over 6 million thesis and dissertation all over the world. It is a good tool to know how research is being done, what is the research in progress and also to know work of others on your areas. In India, we have a similar project called Sodh Ganga. Uh, which is done by the Inflimnet. This important initiative taken by India in terms of formulation of policy, I think India, India is the first country to formulate this plagiarism regulation uh, which was enacted in 2018. Uh, it was notified in Gazette in, on 31st July 2018. I was the member of the community and I know each and every aspect of this regulation and in this there is a clear cut role for library professionals uh, starting from awareness, introducing the topic and problem to the students and the researchers and also organizing training program, workshop, providing plagiarism detection tool. All these things are responsibility of a library professional and library should play a very important role in it. This particular law has a very clear cut guidelines how to deal with the cases of plagiarism every university or institution has to form a two kind of academic integrity panel, a departmental level, a institutional level and these similarities have been defined in uh, different level up to 10 percent, excluded 10 to 40 percent and then level 2 and level 3. So, uh, I suggest everybody must go through these regulations. To conclude, I would like to say this problem is everywhere. It is not a crime, it is because of unawareness or people are not actually aware of the consequences also. So, first make your student understand about this problem, educate about the consequences, the rules, benefits of citing, let them know about the penalties and same time every university and every institution should provide certain infrastructure, provide them infrastructure in terms of software detection tool provide them a good library system and connect your library with the research. I can just give you an example how libraries are important. In Queensland University of Technology in Australia, there is a 6 month pre PhD coursework conducted by the university library for the PhD student. Without completing this 2 credit course, no student can do PhD there and that include information about how to search, what to search, deep web, discovery and plagiarism detection tools and all kind of scientific system like web of science and uh, research information management, e-research literacy, all these topics are covered in this 6 month pre-PhD course. To do the research, first prepare your researcher, without preparing them they cannot do quality research. Librarians are not going to do research with them, but libraries are going to make them a good researcher to do the quality research and improve the, the originality of the research and India may be proud of the contributions made by the Indian libraries. Hope I am able to cover many topics. My detailed presentation is also available on the website of uh, IGNC. You can download that. It is free of cost for further reference. and. Please feel free to ask any question. I thanks all the presenters for references I have used in this slide. It has been used in various occasions to create an awareness and uh, uh, help them in uh, knowing more about the topic. My email IDs are given for further contacts. Thank you. Mm -hmm.